Okay, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Okay, perfect. Awesome. Sweet. It's so nice to meet you. <laughs> hey, nice to meet you too. Uh, we met briefly last summer at a... Oh, at a Disrupt Fest. Yes, just yes. briefly for like maybe yeah. a minute. Yeah. So how are you doing? I'm doing pretty good. Uh, just chilling in quarantine. <laughs> yeah. Have you done yeah. anything uh, photography wise while in quarantine? No. Um, I've done like a couple of like product shoots and stuff. Um, we're the business that I work for now doing photo and video. We're technically like an essential business. So we've done um, some outdoor shoots, uh, just like staying at least like six feet apart yeah for the people but nothing like super fun i went on a video shoot on wednesday for a like motorsport company so that was like probably the highlight of the past month yeah yeah, yeah. my yeah uh, i haven't done anything like uh i've just been re-editing photos that mm -hmm. i've taken in the past or uh yeah. just going back and uh uh reminiscing on the good old days yeah exactly yeah and so, uh, yeah. what was the, I was gonna say? What was the For last? I was gonna ask. What was the last? Uh, what was the last concert that you got to shoot? Um, let's see. That is a really good question. Um, I'm gonna have to pull up my Instagram for this one. I think. <laughs> oh gosh, it has been so long. Max, what was the last show at Fubar? Yeah, he's been out of Fubar. The uh, concert venue up here has been closed since the 13th, I think, of March, right? Yeah, so it's been a hot minute. I like, I'm only trying to think of who it would have even been. Oh, oh, yes. Last show that I shot was Morose at the Ready Room. Was, oh, okay. Um, yeah, the local band here. Yeah. So that was a good one, though. They played with uh, Alpha Wolf. And I had the opportunity to shoot them. But I think that that was like, I think it happened like during a weekday. I had to work the next morning and I was yeah. like, I'm just stoked to be able to see them. I think I took a couple pictures from the back and I was like, yeah, I'm just going to sneak out. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. No, I feel Yeah. I what mean, was the last one that you got to shoot? Uh, now I have to check my Instagram. I know, yeah. Uh, I want to say it was uh, Saint Motel at Delmar Hall, but mm -hmm. I could be wrong. I don't think I've heard of them before. What Saint kind? Motel. What uh? Yeah. What Saint like Motel. genre is that? Um, like they're almost alternative rock slash pop a little bit. Okay. I don't know. Have you heard of uh? I'm trying to think of the song. Uh, Move. I think the song is called Move. Maybe that sounds really familiar. Yeah, like I'll sing a little bit of it. Like it's like gotta get up, gotta get up, move. Like it's like yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That was their big hit, I think. Mm -hmm. And then everything else is like, I think they're super underrated. There's like so many great songs that they have, and they only use like the really poppy ones for like films and stuff like that. Gotcha. Yeah. Gotcha. That would have been cool to see. I'm into that kind of stuff, like that kind of music. Yeah, they had a really fun live show it was like um they had like a four acts mm -hmm. and so they did like little mini plays on the stage so they brought oh, out like a, like a um, fog machine to kind of symbolize like going through the ocean like in the fog and they had like a boat and stuff like that oh wow so it that was uh, been really neat yeah it was really neat unfortunately we couldn't shoot that stuff why so in the middle yeah, we had to wait till after all that good stuff to shoot in yeah. the middle. And it was the first time that ever happened to any of us, I think. Yeah. And um, like the entire time, I'm just looking at the other photographers like, this would be great to get it on camera. This would be great. This mm -hmm. would be great. And then once we got in there, the lighting was terrible. We were just like, oh, oh. like we I missed our that. opportunity. Yeah. Yeah. Dang. Well, you said that was at Del Mar, right? Yeah. There, I mean, were there security like keeping an eye on you guys making sure you weren't trying to shoot from the side or something like uh no uh, oh, i mean i probably would have been a bad photog and just been like oh real sneaky i'm gonna get a couple <laughs> out of it uh i was on the other side where there's no security 
like, uh -huh, where, yeah. where the door is in at. And mm -hmm. I was like, if we wanted to, we could just like, you know, hold our cameras like right here and just like, yeah, hope for the best. But yeah, uh, I didn't want to get kicked out. <laughs> I was just like, right, yeah. It's like I waited an hour just to do something. So I was like, I might as well just be a good guy and just wait it out. Right. And then we yeah. didn't know the lighting was going to be terrible. So yeah. Gosh, I hate whenever that happens. Like you're so stoked for a show and then the lighting is like god awful. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Like, have you ever had that? Like, what were like what were um some bands that you were so excited to shoot that the lighting was terrible and then you kind of were like, ah oh, man, did I waste my time? Yeah. Um I I've had like a pretty good couple of instances of that happening. I'm trying to remember like what exact bands there were. I know um kind of around the beginning of my concert photography career um, I had started um, I was also doing running for a production company here in St. Louis and it was I want to say it was either like Of Mice and Men, um, August Burns Red, something like that. Yeah. I was super stoked to shoot them. They were at the ready room and I got there and like they did uh, like it was obviously like black for the people to come out on the stage or whatever like very dark in the venue and then as soon as like they started their lighting package was phenomenal it was great but it was just so much like bursts of light like they're not even I wouldn't even call them strobes there were a lot of strobes too but um there were just like a whole bunch of instances where it would like light up the whole stage and then go really dim yeah so like trying to change my ISO really fast or my shutter speed or whichever one I could get to the quickest that made the most sense at the time. Um, I'd have to say one of those. And I think I only got like a handful of photos from that. And I think um, there's been so many shows at FUBAR where tour packages have requested like only red light. Mm. And I can't think of like any particular bands but like that has happened to me so many times in my career of going to a venue and they're like no we just want red lights yeah I think uh daughters came through and they I think they were one of the bands that was like want red like only red light or like only blue light which blue light's a lot easier but I think the every photographer every concert photographer knows that red light is just the worst a jab in the heart yeah 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 oh my god I think uh I'm trying to remember what was the first I want to say, Jesus, like, it's hard to remember now how many shows I've so photographed, hard, yeah. but Absolutely. like, I just remember the first time I shot in, like, with red lighting, no one had ever told me, like, hey, red lighting is hell, so when yes. I get my photos back, I'm so excited, like, ready to go edit, and I'm like, mm -hmm. ah, I can't see shit, and then, like, I'm trying to play with the editing, and nothing is working, so yeah. I'm just, like, messaging everyone, like, hey, what do you do with red lighting, and they're like, oh, we just do black and white like that's the yep, best exactly it's the best you can do um yep. you can maybe shade the red a little bit so you could still see something but it doesn't look as good so yeah. I was like disappointed that Absolutely. no one had told me I was like ah oh. yeah and that's always that's like one of the hardest uh like first teaching moments that you have as a photographer is whenever you get those the shows that have like strictly red light and you're absolutely correct yeah we just like throw a black and white on there or whatever. And that's usually no. it. I've seen, there are a couple of photographers. I think, uh, um, don't shoot Skrillex. Uh, Rosario is her name. Um, she does pretty well. I don't, and I can't tell if the photos were from red light, but she does like a really cool, like orange kind of color. Yeah. Um, and then like, uh, she does something with her highlights where, I don't know. She, it's just like, it's like orange instead of red. And it like kind of helps balance the highlight. She's an amazing photographer that I'd love to learn from. She can, I swear she does amazing work in any situation she gets thrown in. Yeah. So. No, uh, like I've been looking at like a, like a ton of people. So like, I think I want to say, have you ever shot Ashland? Like I got to. Like, yeah. Yeah. So Ashland and I go way back. They were actually one of the first concerts that I ever shot they were the first music video I ever shot for we did a god-awful idea <laughs> um it looks so corny and bad um and that's like that's on me I was a brand new videographer photographer at that point. yeah but they're amazing yeah they're great. yeah so they were my first band that I shot 
so I was before I was a photographer, I was working with a friend of mine on a uh, like web series that we had written. Mm-hmm. And so we were trying to pitch it to HBO. We we're like, okay, we got this email and they were doing this contest. Like if you could come up with a pitch for a, uh, like a short web series, they mm-hmm. would like fund it and make it with you. And we didn't hear anything back. We were so disappointed. We we're like, oh, we had a really good pitch. So we're like, why don't we just fucking do it? So we, f- we found a bar on, uh, on Manchester somewhere on, I think Maplewood, I think okay. that's where it is. Mm-hmm. And we went in there. We're like, "Hey, can we borrow your bar?" Like we did. Like we were like ready to like get like yeah, but you have to like pay a thousand dollars or something. Yeah, rent it out. Rent it out. Yeah, and the bar owner was like, "Yeah, sure, you can film in here for free. Nothing, you know." And wow, how nice. We filmed it, and we wanted like to get a like a local band to like do like almost like um like there was a scene where we wanted to have like a a bar scene with uh with a band in the background playing Mm -hmm. and i was just kind of scrolling through pages of like local bands and i saw ashland and i listened to Mm -hmm. one of their songs i was like okay yeah i like it all right let's get Mm -hmm. them so i contacted them we got them in and i was like we should i should probably have a camera to shoot like behind the scenes video so i did that and then i was like you know what i'm also gonna take pictures and I got the pictures and they were okay. They weren't yeah. the best because I didn't know anything at that point. I was just kind of like a script writer. I was just writer. And uh, that kind of kickstarted everything. And then the next show I did was Orb Tour, which I just got by luck. I just like submitted and they're like, yeah, sure. You can shoot here. That's awesome. That's really cool. Ashland's a really good band. Uh, they're really cool people too. Yeah. So I bet that was like a good like first like kind of band to like get that little connection with yeah it was and then I yeah. shot them a couple times afterwards and then I haven't uh I haven't shot them in maybe three years two years yeah they uh I feel like they don't come to St. Louis as often maybe as they used to but I know that they're like they're doing like bigger and better things which is yeah. super awesome and they're from um they're from like northern Illinois like up near Champaign-Urbana that's like where I grew up yeah. So we kind of, we like bonded over that whole thing. Cause they were like, oh, we're from this podunk town, you know, up North or whatever. And I was like, oh, what's it called? And they told me, and I was like, I was actually born there. <laughs> so that no, was really yeah. cool. Yeah. And so what, like, how did you get into photography? Like, what was it like, was it through concerts or was it like just kind of for so fun? So my, my backstory with concert photography, uh, things kind of fell into my lap in the best way possible. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead on in this. It's like a tad bit long. So like if anyone's listening to this and wants yeah. to skip through, <laughs> it's totally fine. Um, but I actually I was living in Florida whenever I bought my first camera. I think this was about three years ago, three, four years ago. Um, it was towards the end of me living in Florida. I had I had bought a camera. Um, my ex at the time went to Full Sail University, um, which is like a music art business, like music type school thing I guess I don't know yeah they did warp tour stuff like the full sales stages and everything like they had their own stuff um but so I kind of realized that like oh you can be a photographer in real life and like actually make this a career because the only experience I had really had with photography before that was just like hometown like photo studios that I mean, they're the same people that do the school portraits, that do the weddings in town, you know, just very small town photographers. Yeah. Um, so I had ended up buying a camera and I came home, moved back home to Illinois and was really, I'm really good friends with um, Keegan Walker. He was a part of a band called Another Day Drowning at the time. And they were opening for We Came as Romans at the Ready Room. And I had asked them or they had asked me uh, to work merch for them uh, during that show. And I was like, yeah, for sure. So I had gone out. I didn't take my camera with me because I didn't really, I didn't really know anything about the music world. Um, And I got there and there was this gentleman who was there. uh, We had gotten there at load in. So the venue was fairly empty and there was another guy walking around and he had a, he had a camera around his neck and I could tell he was shooting with Canon. And I was like, Oh, I got to talk to this guy. I got to pick his brain. Um, I was so scared to do so. Uh, someone actually went up to him 
like for me and was like, <laughs> Hey, would you mind coming and talking to this, this girl? Uh, she just started with photography. She just like has some questions, wants to pick your brain. And, uh, that person ended up being Freddie D'Angelo. Um, amazing photographer, amazing guy, amazing videographer, amazing musician. This guy literally does it all. Yeah. Um, so ended up getting paired up with him. Uh, and that night at the show, he told me that if I could get a photo pass from asking Alexandria <laughs> that I could use his extra camera that he had with him to shoot. And so, uh, through a wild series of events, uh, actually ended up talking to Ben in the green room <laughs> Yeah, and was just like, Hey, can I have a photo pass? Like totally not the professional way of doing things. Yeah. Um, but he was like, he was like, yeah, I don't care. Do whatever you want. So he handed me a photo pass and Freddie gave me his camera. I got first three songs. I took 550 photos. <laughs> my first time and Freddie sent me all of my raws and asked me if I was interested in an internship to learn more about uh, the basics of photography, um, being a tour photographer, being a videographer. So I worked with him, signed a contract with him for a year internship and we worked together for about nine months doing that. Uh, he would send me like photo projects and stuff like, hey, go take pictures of these objects at these times of the day. Um, different lighting things like it was a, he was an amazing teacher um, started working with him we went on for about nine months and I remember where we were we were on a shoot together because um, I was his second shooter for everything so that I could learn um, and he called me his intern on a video shoot and I remember feeling disgusted and mm. I was just like I sat him down we went to lunch the next day and I go I love you man but I don't think I want to be your intern anymore. I, I feel like I'm confident enough to do this, you know? And he was like, if you want out of your contract, you just say the word. And I was like, yeah, I, I think I'm ready. And he was like, all right. And just like fly a little birdie. And so he literally taught me everything that I needed to know from the very beginning. He uh, had me go with him to shoot concerts all the time, linked me up with a lot of local bands and made a lot of friends through him. Um, and those friendships just continued to blossom. And Freddie went on to do bigger and better things. He still does uh, like music videos and stuff like that. He's gotten a lot more into like the commercial business side of things, which is where the money's at. So yeah. and he's doing, he's doing fantastic. I'm so proud of him. I still keep up with him all the time, but he, he really is the, the whole reason that I even got started into concert photography was seeing some little girl in a in a venue looking lost and just wanting to do something and he made it happen for me so yeah that's cool like yeah. I think yours is way cooler than mine oh stop let like, me hear yours let me hear yours uh so I, I think I just said it but like that's just basically how I started and that then, web series that web series and then uh -huh. um I had a podcast with a buddy of mine where we talked wrestling and mm -hmm. it had a website and so i was just like i want to shoot warp tour just to see and yeah. but i was like ah they're not gonna pick me because i i had submitted the application like ready to be rejected mm -hmm. and they're like oh yeah you can shoot for us and then like so i was like all right okay I'm, I'm ready okay i'm gonna go i'm gonna take all these amazing shots and i get there and uh the first like uh thing i realized that would probably like helped me even though I was devastated was just like working the ISO changing it for different areas of the venue because like you mm -hmm. would shoot in the venue or outside on the side stage yeah and so I would either forget to change the ISO or the aperture everything the mm -hmm. f-stop and I was just like so gutted because like I would because yeah. uh, I think one of the first bands I shot there was some 41 oh and, such a good one too and like the like the shots were good like the posing like the composition they were, i thought they were great the only mm -hmm. thing that i hated was like it was either blurry or um like there, there was just something off like yeah. i can't really explain you could just tell like if you have that eye you yeah. can just say oh yeah it's off yeah and so i was like no like i like these were all bands i had listened to kind of growing up so i was mm -hmm. like fuck like i just i just ruined it and I yeah. was, I was just like devastated. Mm -hmm. And 
I was like, all right, I'm going to sit down. I'm going to learn everything about this camera. I'm going to go outside, take pictures. So like my dad would be mowing the lawn and I would just like take a photo of him mowing the lawn. Yeah. And, and he's like, would you, <laughs> would you take a picture for? I'm like, right. <laughs> I'm like, I'm just practicing. Like I was just trying, like, I'm just trying to figure out what the fuck this does, you know? Mm -hmm. And then the used came and did their, um, I forgot if it's an anniversary show for both mm -hmm. albums. I forgot what the albums were, but it was a two night show. Mm -hmm. And uh, I had gotten in contact with some PR people and they're like, yeah, you can come shoot the show. And I shot it and I was like, oh, okay. I think, I think I got some great photos. Yeah. And then the next day I did a, a little photo shoot with my buddy. He was doing something with his car. He's like, hey, can you take some photos with me and my car? And I was like, yeah, sure, no problem. And like in the middle of the shoot, I get an email from the U's uh, PR. And they're like, hey, we saw your photos from last night. And we would love for you to come and, and shoot for the band. And then your photos would be used by the band. band. Oh, wow. And I was like, uh, yeah, give me a second. <laughs> I was like, hey, buddy, uh, can we cut this photo shoot I gotta short? Go. I got to yeah. get the fuck out of here. And yeah. he's like, yeah, yeah, of course, get the fuck out of here. They're like, yeah. yeah. And I was like, and so I booked it got there and I think those two shows were probably some of the best photos I'd gotten at that stage in yeah. my concert photography career mm -hmm. and I always go back to those photos I'm like these are the photos that like like made me even though like yeah. I had no followers I was like just posting them on like Facebook or whatever just to kind of you know see what people thought of and they're like oh yeah, yeah they're pretty good you know and so yeah. like I just kept at it and kept getting more shows and then eventually mm -hmm. uh uh do you know ben ben vogel saying i don't think so you don't know ben he, should, he i think he shot for 1057 the point uh I'd, maybe i know um i think freddie might be doing it now and then i think before that was maybe steve money i don't remember i i feel like i've heard the guy's name for sure um but no i don't know him personally or anything yeah so like i bumped into him um mm -hmm. my buddy uh eric he's in a band called mental fixation okay. and he was supposed to shoot for oh no he wasn't supposed to he was supposed to perform at point fest i think uh -huh. but something had happened to where their performance was canceled because i think of mm -hmm. weather so they rescheduled his for uh, his um performance with uh story of the year pod Oh, nice. Some other bands for um, some something beer fest somewhere, uh -huh. somewhere in uh, Jefferson Park or something. Gotcha. And he's like, hey, you mind coming and shooting with us or shooting the band? And I was like, yeah, no, for sure. Like, I'll do it. So it was a nice Saturday, sunny mm -hmm. shot. And then I run into him and I was like, hey, like, who are you? And he's like, oh, I shoot for 1057 The Point. I was like, oh, so you're the guy whose photos I, I like a lot. He's like, mm -hmm. yeah, thank you. He's like, I was like, I like your editing style. Like, I just, there's something pleasing about your editing that, like, I just mm -hmm. like. And he's like, yeah, no, just, uh, you know, send me a DM if you ever have any questions. And I was just like, yeah, I'll make sure to do that. Yeah. And so I basically, that was like, what, three years ago, four, two years ago, I was just kind of picking his brain as far as, like, what to do for editing and stuff like that. And I kind of copied his style for like a uh -huh. for like a small bit and then I kind of was just like all right I want to I want to try to find something that suits me more because mm -hmm. I don't want I don't want people thinking that I'm either stealing someone's editing or that or probably worse thinking that it's their photo when it's mine yeah so or vice versa I, I think that that this is a great segue into it but so I know for me a lot of the times whenever I'm editing photos I do look to different people for like inspiration and stuff. Um, Amber Perez, I think is, she's phenomenal. Um, Michaela Austin is a great tour photographer as well. Alana, um, I cannot think of her last name right now. I think it's Alana Alion, like mm. on Instagram or whatever. Yeah. Um, but I know like for me, I do the exact same thing. I look at their photos and I'm like, okay, let me try to make mine look like that. And then take what I come up with and like try to either improve it or like make it my own. I think that photographers, everyone really kind of starts like that. 
um, like just like reverse engineering or trying to like mimic someone else's photos to maybe see how they got it that way, what they can do um, to like use things from that to create their own styles. Yeah. Um, so I feel like a lot of people, a lot of photographers do that. And that's how a lot of people really develop into their own styles is because they're like, oh, I see this thing and I really like that, but I want to change this aspect about it or, you know, a couple aspects about it. And then they get their style. And I think that that's wonderful that photographers use other photographers as inspiration. I don't think that there's photographers that are like, uh, cause I think that the photo community can be really, really awesome or it can be really, really toxic. Sometimes yeah. it, it really depends on, there's some really good people. And then there's some people that really aren't in it for the, for the right things, you know? Um, but I feel like that's a big thing in the photography community is where people are like, Oh, they stole my colors or they stole my style or, you know, things like that. Um, I think art is subjective. And if someone is looking at your photo and wanting to do something along the same lines of you, that that's like more of a compliment like than yeah. anything. So I think that like looking at people's photos and trying to like mimic them is a really good tool for photographers to use. And sometimes I think people try to spin it in a different light of like, like you were saying, you're like, Oh, I don't want him to think like I was like stealing his editing style or, you know, trying to copy what he was doing. A lot of times people are using those for learning experiences. Um, and it's really a compliment and photographers will take it and they'll spin it like, oh, you're trying to do the same thing as me or something like that. Yeah. I think that's like one of my least favorite things about the photography community is how some people, not all, um, when we've got a lot of good people in St. Louis, I haven't experienced this a lot here. A lot of it is like online. Um, that is like a huge thing for the photography community. That's just like, eh, if we could just like take out that one part, yeah. you know, everything would be fantastic. No. Yeah. Like for me, I, like I always thought of it, like you can only edit a photo so much that yeah. and it, there's probably been like, there's, I don't know. I don't know how many photographers in the world there are, but like at some point there's going to be like an intersection of editing that like, absolutely. it's like, you can only edit, so differently before you start seeing the similarities mm -hmm. that I was just like fuck it I'm just whatever I do I'm just gonna see if it yeah. works and if it works right. for me sweet and so far I mean I haven't run into that problem of like mm -hmm. people you know being assholes or anything yeah like, uh, you know like I think maybe once uh when I was first starting I had the Canon 70D Mm -hmm. and it's a crop sensor and I, yeah. I just had the kit lens and mm -hmm. someone had asked me oh what are you shooting with I was like oh just 70d crop like standard lens mm -hmm. I'm like oh okay well I mean you can do better or uh, like or like you know like or uh oh it's not as great but you'll probably get some good photos and I was like like you can hear the backhanded kind of like right yeah you'll maybe get some good photos and yeah. so like and I used it for about until the end of last year and so mm -hmm. all of the photos up until then have just been through a kit lens or a regular 50 millimeter mm -hmm. and everyone's like oh like what kind of lens were you using i was like like nifty 50 yep kit lens and they're like well how'd you get it to look so good i was like at this point it's just editing and just like yep. sitting at your computer like meticulously mm -hmm. looking at like is there noise? Should I take out the mm -hmm. noise or does the noise add to it? Cause like, right, yeah. I've seen your photos and like, I love the way you use the noise. Cause sometimes I used Thank to you. be very like, ah, oh, noise is ugly for me. Like I just yeah. hate it. But like you've used it to your advantage. Yeah. Well, I really appreciate that. Um, I think that I hate noise as much as the next person and especially as a photographer. Um, but whenever it comes to low light photography, like noise is going to happen, um, yeah. especially in, in the concert world. Um, it's really hard. Uh, like I, I shoot with Sony now, so I've got an a seven R three. And I think like whenever I start hitting like 800 ISO is whenever you really start to notice like the noise coming through a lot more. Um, and especially cause it's like such a high megapixel, it's easier for it to, to get a little noisy once you go above that. 
but you as a concert photographer know shooting at 800 ISO means that my shutter speed's probably gonna have to be like maybe 125 and like I have to shoot at a low f stop yeah. and you know that like with bands jumping around 125 isn't always gonna cut it you know yeah. sometimes you got to go up higher so there's a lot of times where I just have to max out my ISO especially at FUBAR yeah oh my gosh it's that was such a dark venue I'm really I'm really sad to see them go, but uh, I've seen Red Flag and it is phenomenal. And I am so ready to shoot with those lights. Uh, it's gonna be, I think concert photographers in St. Louis are really gonna like that. Yeah. But uh, yeah, there's only so much you can do with noise. And sometimes you just gotta, instead of fighting it, you just gotta learn to play with it and, and work around it and let it be artsy. Yeah. And so what was like, cause I, so I saw you and, met you briefly at a a disrupt like Mm -hmm. what for you was kind of like uh like festivals like outdoor shooting like like did you have any bad experiences or did you kind of do your homework unlike I did like so my first outdoor photo shoot uh, like festival style was warp tour as well just like Mm -hmm. you Um, I I was shooting on my first camera still at that point so I had um, a rebel sl1 Mm -hmm. um with just a kit lens and a nifty 50 as yeah. well uh that is like the nifty 50s are like 200 bucks so it's like the easiest like lens to buy um but i shot i didn't really have um i used uh, i was still in auto everything at mm. the top. so like my my uh, focusing was auto my like iso all of that stuff was auto so yeah. i didn't have to uh I got some good pictures out of it, but I also like wasn't in control of the camera. You know what I mean? So like, yeah. um, it looked like th- they were good photos, but they just weren't very like artsy or anything like that. I think I shot in a uh, AV mode. So like, I think I set my aperture and that was it. And, yeah. And the camera did the rest of the work. But uh, as I started, as I started getting in the manual, that was one thing that Freddie, uh, so whenever Freddie, uh, taught me he told me concert photographers don't shoot in auto they don't shoot in in auto mode and they don't shoot in auto focus auto focus isn't real and concert photography <laughs> I was like oh okay so we can only shoot manual I get that so I shot manual for the longest time and then like uh I think it was I want to say it probably wasn't even that long ago maybe like two years ago something like that Freddie and I were chatting and he was like oh yeah you can use autofocus he was like I was just telling you that because I needed you to learn how to use your camera by yourself and not let it just like do everything for you yeah and so I remember being kind of pissed at that moment (laughs) um but I think that it really did shape me into the photographer that I am because I I mean I probably wouldn't have taken the time to learn too much about manual had he not like put it in my brain yeah uh, that that was the only way uh but I have had um, some concerts, uh, some outdoor festivals that have been, uh, had like some blown out photos. Um, I think like the worst thing is like shooting at the amphitheater. That's like really the only place that I've done outdoor photos. Um, I've done some, I think I shot a couple concerts at, uh, like, I think it's called Black Sheep out in, uh, Colorado. Um, that's an outdoor venue. That one was pretty good. Um, I would say that I had the hardest time with that one. That one was actually, uh, I want to say that was maybe, maybe about two years ago, something like that. Um, I, it was really harsh sunlight out there. Mm. And even though this, so the stage was covered, um, but it like wasn't in an amphitheater. So it wasn't like totally covered. Only the stage was covered. Right. So like the lead singer of the band would be, obviously farther up on the stage and be in the sunlight but then everyone else was in the shadows Hmm. so I think I got some like really good photos of him and then everyone else's was just super (laughs) mediocre yeah yeah like I think and like I never try to do this but like I always go in with the intention of like I want to get great shots of the drummer because the drummer yes. has probably like either the worst light up like lighting settings to to, Mm -hmm. like he's either barely lit Yep. or he the only time you can really see him is like with strobes and mm-hmm. um like i think i, sh- I shot coin 
last November, I don't know, October, November, I don't know. It's all, it's all blurring together. It is, yes. But, uh, but I finally, like, I like, that, like, that was my white whale, my unicorn was getting great mm-hmm. shots of the, of the drummer. And so, like, I just focused on him. I was like, fuck the singer. I don't care. Yep. No like, one else matters. <laughs> drummer right now. And I yep. got it. And I was so happy with everything. Mm-hmm. And then, of course, the next show, yeah, I can barely see the drummer. And, yeah. like, I don't, and then, like, and so when people ask me, like, oh, where's the drummer for this band or that band? I'm like, I tried. Like, that's all yeah. I said. Like, I <laughs> that's, tried. That's all I got. Yeah. So that like, happens maybe- to me all the time. That happens to me all the time. My boyfriend uh, is a drummer in a band in St. Louis called Lobby Boxer. Um, and, like, whenever we go on tour, I always just, like, I get the two boys in the front out of the way. And then I spend, like, the rest of the time just, like, getting drum shots. Because the drummer is, like, one of the fastest moving people, obviously, yeah. in the band. So you have to bump that shutter a little bit. Uh, and then also like they are usually, like you said, like not as well lit um, and they're farther in the back. So it's like kind of harder to get to them. Uh, but I appreciate photographers that make the mental note that drummers are important and go above and beyond to like get those drum photos. Cause it is really hard. And there, there's always going to be times where it's just not possible. Yeah. Um, or if you do, it's going to be bad. And you're like, I don't really want a bad photo associated with my business, you know? Yeah. Yeah. That's usually how it goes. Like I either, like in the, um, in the, sc- like in the, on the, on the screen, usually it looks good. But then once I go yes. back, it's like, oh, it's a little off or I can't crop it or leave it the way it mm-hmm. is. Cause it just, it's a weird angle. And I'm just like, ah, oh, like, I don't even know if I want to post the whole thing. Cause then. Right. Like my like the way I think is like if I was in a band and I was just going through someone's photos that they took of our band and I'm the drummer and mm-hmm. it's like front man, front man, guitar, bass, bass, guitar, front man. Oh, okay. Where am I? Right, yeah, exactly. Like, oh I see a symbol, but I don't see me. Yeah. Like I just I I try to do the best that I can with the situation, but like mm-hmm. uh like I hope uh I don't know, hope moving forward people try to light the drummer better i don't know like, yeah, i don't know absolutely. i don't know who made up the rule or who comes right. up with these lighting that like, <laughs> yeah. doesn't highlight the drummer you know? right yeah absolutely i work with uh i work with a couple of local bands here very steadily um, morose is one of those uh lobby boxer and broken youth being the other two um and Max gets Max gets some pretty good shots, uh, but I know that like the drummer for Morose, his name's Chris Ritchie, love him to bits, but he is the most difficult person I think for me personally to get uh, like good photographs of. He's like I I feel like every time that I shoot him, he's just in the worst lighting situation. He's like. I don't even know how, but he gets tucked farther back in the stage, like more and more every time. <laughs> uh, so it's actually like a running joke with me and Morose. Whenever I send them over their photos, they're just like, oh, I wonder if Chris got any photos this time. Yeah. I'm like, yes, he has some. Does he have as many as everyone else? No. And I know it sucks and I hate it too. Yeah. But like, what else am I supposed to do? And the drummer, like, you, I think you can get some like cool shots, you know, like if they're a drummer that does like stick flips or something that's a little more versatile. But for me, what is hard is like drummers can't move around, no. you know, and do like super, super cool stuff. And they're the driving rhythm that keeps everyone on, on track. So like they really can't fuck up either um, without it being super noticeable. So I feel like they're allowed to do less. And it's like, man, I can only get so many angles from the drum. And like, I feel, I always feel bad whenever I deliver like 20 or 30 like drum photos. And I feel like they, they're like slightly different, but for the most part, it's like the same. Yeah. I think that, I think that that's one thing that I want to improve on this next year with concerts is uh, getting better drum photos and figuring out whether I need to start doing double exposures or more light dragging something to make it different whatever that's going to be that's going to be uh my main focus i think for this next year yeah like that's that's always my focus anytime i do a concert because uh i always feel bad but also 
the drums more than anyone they're just always placed in weird spots so like yeah. they'll either be like all the way almost to the edge of the stage mm -hmm. really close but then you don't have either the wide enough lens yeah either get it or you go around to like the side stage and you kind of just take photos of like their side their shoulder yeah their shoulder just uh, uh, it's just yeah. this or that mm -hmm. you, you, you'll hope they'll do something cool with their head or something right but sometimes you'll get those drummers that are just like i'm just yeah. going through the motion right now right i know whenever uh whenever bands like backline like the whole thing or whatever and the first local is like their drums are at the edge of the front of the stage yeah i'm always like oh cool i'm actually gonna get drum pictures but then it's i gotta do the photographer no-no yeah of holding your camera up here because the stages are you know i mean they come up to like your chest or whatever right so it's like i can get one of those cool like through the tom uh i think they're called toms what the, i don't know what they're called no one like cancel me on the internet for calling them the wrong <laughs> things um but like the, you know, you can get one of those cool shots, like kind of through the drums, you know, of the drummer's face. Um, but other than that, like at that, if you're following your, your concert photography, uh, like rules or whatever, you're not supposed to stick the camera up in the air to get your shot. Yeah. Uh, but a lot of times I find myself just kind of like looking around real fast and no one else is like trying to shoot the same thing as me or I'm not in someone else's shot. I'm just like, okay, real right. quick, yeah. <laughs> like raise them up. I mean, I'll do it if I'm, uh, like, in the pit. Like, so, like, once you get out mm -hmm. and you can still shoot in, you know, back of house. Oh, yeah. Uh, it's fair game. <laughs> yeah. Like, I'll, I'll, like, I'll, like, hold it up a little bit just so um, I don't get, like, all the heads of the people, you know, just yeah. so I can get, like, a clear view of the stage. But other than that, like, mm -hmm. I'm, I don't think I've ever done it, like, while in the photo pit. Like, I think yeah. I'm just, I'm self-conscious. I'm like, oh, if someone sees me, I'm going to oh, be the yeah. one that they're like, ah, you're not, you're not. As yeah. Good. I think that's like one of the biggest no-nos uh, with concert photography etiquette is like, you're not supposed to do that because you you can get in other people's shots, you know, and you're like, even as a photographer, um, you're kind of there just to like do your job and you don't want to take away from the experience that other people have paid for. So yeah. also like trying not to block that view. Um, one venue in particular that I just like, I feel like I almost can't get a good photo unless my camera is like kind of high up is the pageant. Yeah. Their stage is so tall. And I'm like, I'm five foot 10. Yeah. And I still am just like, what the heck? Like I, and there are so many, uh, there are like a couple of shorter photographers around and I've like shot with some of them at the pageant. And I'm just like, how are you like do you want to get on my shoulders man like i can't even see you know i don't right. know what the heck how these people and but they get phenomenal photos and i'm just like maybe i need to be shorter maybe yeah. that's the problem <laughs> no i mean i've gotten some pretty good ones there and i think i'm like an inch shorter than you i'm like five uh -huh. nine <laughs> yeah we're but, really uh, close yeah and so I, I like i think the you okay yeah so the used was my first show there and everything is like super wide like mm -hmm. so i think that's why i got some good shots and yeah. then also i just like moved to the side hoping that someone would walk up to the edge and just me mm -hmm. take like really quick photos yeah but uh i think yeah i think the pageant is a little harder i don't i think people assume because it's a little bit bigger and you have more space that mm -hmm. you're gonna get like you're guaranteed amazing shots and sometimes yeah. that's not the case yeah, no, I, I gotta be completely honest with you. I think that my, the photos that come out, okay, so I'm ranking venues in St. Louis mm, from okay. best to shoot at with lighting to worst to shoot at with lighting. So I think my favorite venue to shoot at based on their lighting has always been Ready Room. Uh, love Ready Room. I think, is it Jerry? Gary. Jerry? Gary or Jerry, one of those two <laughs> names is the name of their uh, lighting director there. And he is phenomenal. Ever since they got him uh, shooting concerts there has just been amazing. Yeah. Um, I think that I, I kind of miss shooting at Firebird, if I'm being honest. I kind of liked their light setup. It wasn't anything too fancy, but they had like <laughs> enough lighting uh, that like, 
it, oh. I just felt like my my photos were like more lit. Yeah. Um, that way, and then I would probably say like Del Mar. I love FUBAR. I don't, I really don't like hate shooting at FUBAR. That's like <laughs> where I learned everything coming up. And I think what made me such a good, like low light photographer, not such a good, I just say like a decent, like low light photographer is because I worked in one of the darkest, like lit venues. Yeah. But I think some of my favorite photos have still come out of FUBAR too. Mm. Yeah. yeah. What you, what would you say? Let me hear your ranking. Uh, what you got? Okay. Um, so from, Okay, what was it? Best to worst? Uh, best to worst, yeah, for lighting. Oh, that's tough. Okay. I know. Um, I would agree. Number one is ready room. Like I've shot mm -hmm. there a couple times, not a whole lot, but every time I have, my shots have always come out really good. Mm -hmm. Um, two is Del Mar. Three. I've never shot at food bar, so I don't know. Really? Never oh, got to. My heart breaks. You know, um, well, my friend, he was in a band like in high school. So like, and I never saw photographers there, like, cause I would always go to his shows. Uh, and I would never see photographers like either in the pit. They're always kind of like, you know how there's like this little step, like these like yeah. stairs to go on stage mm -hmm. they would i would always see them there just taking photos from the side yeah once in a while i would see someone try to brave through the crowd to get, like get a shot yep <laughs> but um and so i was just like oh, i don't want to go through that or like i don't want to like spend all that time getting okay photos that i'm not mm -hmm. proud of right. so i just like i, I avoid i avoided foobar for mm -hmm as long as i could right which um, actually i guess it was as long as you could because now they're not around now they're not, yeah now they're five what was it again red, red they're flag? they're uh red flag now yeah they're literally right across the street they mm -hmm. just like jumped a little bit yeah and do you know if the if the venue's bigger or same size uh, yeah it's uh i believe that it's supposed to be a thousand cap venue uh i got to go in there the other day and it it just looks so cool. Like I'm not going to give anything away because I really want people to uh, see it and experience it for the first time in person. Um, but I think that the uh, photography community will be very, very happy with Red Flag <laughs> um, and what they are going to be offering um, as far as their lighting and their sound and their stage. I mean, everything really is, is perfect. So yeah. Yeah. Let's see. Okay. So I said Del Mar. Mm -hmm. uh old rock house oh i forgot about them i yeah. didn't ever like shooting there i, I don't know I'd why like, i don't know maybe it's different experiences but like i got to shoot like this band that like for some reason no one knows of but i'm like i feel like they should be huge oh let me hear it who is it uh vinyl theater like i don't think no. i don't think yeah you see like, i was hoping to be the the outlier <laughs> no and uh and i got to interview them and so like i interviewed them and then i went up and did the shoot and the lighting was just good enough that it like made everything better plus i you know editing now yeah i got used to editing in their lighting so like mm -hmm. i was able to work with what i had but their their lighting is okay like they don't have yeah. a whole lot uh yeah. to work with but i i've gotten some pretty good photos out of there yeah i uh i'm trying to think i think i've shot I've shot a couple of local shows there. Um, there was some guy that I shot there for uh, MJP uh, a couple of years ago. And I can't remember what his name was, but his photos turned out really well. They had, I think they brought a couple extra lights um, that they put up there. Um, I know Freddie D'Angelo has um, held his, uh, I think he does like Freedom, Freedom Fest or something like that up there in, in memory of his dad. Um, and he performs. And I've shot there a couple of times with him. I just, I don't know what it is. Maybe I, it's just the vibe, man. It's just the vibe. <laughs> yeah, maybe, yeah, maybe it's just yeah, the vibe experience. Yeah. And then uh, I think last would be uh, the Duck Room. Ooh, I forgot about Duck Room. I hate Duck Room. Yeah. And well, I hate I, their lighting. I've shot my best and my worst in, in that room. So, and okay, they were, and they, were it, they were the same artist, Dorothy. Oh, okay. All so, right. I, I, shot, I think uh, the first time I shot her there was in 2017. Mm -hmm. And uh, maybe, I think it was just the lighting was just not that great and everything yeah. came out all noisy and grainy. 
Yeah. And then when I shot, when I went back to shoot, I think a year later, like the photos were amazing. I was like, these are the best. Like, I don't, I, I, I was like, I think I've peaked. Like, this is as good yeah. as we're going <laughs> to get. This is it. Yeah. Throw like, the camera away. We'll just leave those up. Last I was thing. Like, yeah. I was <laughs> just like, I'm not coming back to the duck room because if I come back yeah. and I have a terrible experience. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to be pissed off. Um, so I was like, all right, this is it. We'll like, leave on a good note. <laughs> well, exactly. I was like, we'll leave on a good note. And then I guess before uh, the duck room is the pageant because it's a lot of hit or miss. Yeah. I feel you like know? you either get a really awesome set out of it or you're just like, I already yeah. got three photos. <laughs> well, I mean, so I don't know if it's maybe because when bands move up, they either get pretentious mm -hmm. with like the photography lighting or they're mm -hmm. like they have the weirdest requests like some will be like you can only do black and white or they only yeah. shoot in red lighting or you can only shoot them from the back of the house yeah and so uh what was i think last year we were I, I shot good charlotte but they're like mm -hmm. you can't you can't shoot um in the pit you have to go all the way to the back of the house Oh, let's go um, to an arena then. <laughs> yeah, and I was just like taking the photos, and I was like, I'm not into it. Like I was just like, yeah. I just walked out. I was like, all right, I'm done. Like, yeah. Like I signed the photo release. They're like, oh yeah, like the band can use the photos. And I was like, I just never, I just never gave them the photos. I was like, yeah, they're yeah. not good. Yeah. Like, you're not gonna use them anyways. Yeah, I just yeah, it really is. It's a different. It's a different thing every time you go to pageant like yeah. not not like good or bad and or either way it's just it's not consistent you know right. what i mean yeah. like as far as like what's allowed what's not allowed different things like that yeah and so i mean but also the they always have the weirdest restrictions too during the like a lot of the shows like mm -hmm. uh like you have to know camila cabello yes of course she, yeah she she performed there once and we almost didn't get to shoot her, her her in the in the photo pit because there was like a stalker guy that like mm -hmm. was threatening to come out and like oh, wow. like either like jump on stage and attack her or something so like they were like contemplating whether or not you know to allow yeah. photographers in the photo pit and i was just like god damn it it's like someone what someone's got to ruin it <laughs> someone's got to ruin it for all of us but luckily yeah. we were able to but like it's all yeah it's always the pageant that I'm always like very weary about whenever I go mm -hmm. and show up I'm like is it gonna be a great experience or a bad one yeah and usually I just hope that I, I see someone that I know and then we just talk all night and hopefully yeah that's the best that comes out mm -hmm. of it I know I'm always searching whenever I go to like whenever I'm at Bar or Ready Room um when I used to go to Firebird like kind of the smaller venues like that um where I feel a lot more comfortable and I know like really good friends with like all of the venue staff um at all of those places um so like I feel like I'm surrounded by a lot more people that I know but definitely whenever I'm shooting the pageant or Delmar I'm always like where's Jen Miller where's Alyssa Bardall where's uh there's another one gosh I can't remember her name she's such a sweetheart too she got like really long black hair uh, uh Rima you know Rima Rima yes yeah, I'm always like, where's Rima? Those are like always my like go tos. Yeah, because uh, they're usually one of them is usually at a at one of those shows. Yeah, yeah, usually that's what I look for is either Rima or I know Alyssa hasn't shot in a while. Yeah, I don't I don't remember what she was doing. She's doing something really cool right now. I can't remember what it was, but I know that she's doing well. I think it's still surrounded uh, with photo and video. Yeah. But I think that she started to move a little bit out of the concert world. I I feel like there comes a point where people kind of start to realize, not that there's no money to be made in music, um, like music photography or anything, but it's just a harder ball game to play. Um, and so I think a lot of people are like, want to keep that as like their little, uh, the little thing that pulls at their heartstring, but they, it, it just gets to a point where like, um, sometimes like you just can't continue to pursue like that path of things because you have to be able to provide for yourself. Yeah. Um, but I know a lot of people are just like going through phases and they're like, yeah, I did great. Yeah. I had a lot of fun these three years shooting music and now I want to get into something else. Right. So yeah. I think that, I think that that uh, like growth uh, for photographers happens frequently. Yeah. I think that happened for me about two years ago. I was just like, 
It's like, I love the concert photography, but I want to mm. see what else I can do. So then I yeah. started shooting with models and like, and like, I like, it wasn't like anything that I was like, like, this is what I want to shoot. I was just like, my first model was my friend. I was like, Hey dude, do you mind yeah. like shooting with me? He's like, yeah. He's like, you're not going to, how are you going to pose me? I was like, I don't know. Like, yeah, we'll, we'll figure it out together. And then yep. like through just trial and tribulation of just like making sure because posing a man is so difficult because you, you got to yeah. get them comfortable, especially mm -hmm. if they've never shot like, you know, like pose or anything. Mm -hmm. You have to get them comfortable with uh, just letting you kind of pose them or like, because yeah. th they'll be like, are you sure this looks cool? Or because mm -hmm. like they're in their mind, they're already thinking, do I look girly? Like what? Am, what right. Is, like I bet I look so weird or something. Yeah. And I was yeah. just like, trust me, you look, you're going to look good yeah and he let was me like, do my job <laughs> yeah and he was like the first guy that he was like all right i trust you 100 percent completely to pose me where, like however you want mm -hmm. and so from then it was just meeting other people that were like collaborative because i hate not that i hate it but i i always like it when like we come together and we're like oh we'll we'll talk about outfits location mm -hmm. like i like working with someone instead of just directing them Yes. You know, unless I have like a clear vision of what I want, then I'll totally mm -hmm. be that dictator. Like I, like, I want this, I want that. Like, but yeah, I'm hardly ever like that. So like, I'm, I, th I think that's why no one ever says shit about me. It's like, Oh, he's just really calm. Very nice. Yeah. And I'm like, okay, that's all I need. That's all I want. Yep. There you go. Yeah. Yeah. It's definitely, um, yeah, it's definitely different. Like moving into different aspects of photography. I know I kind of had, the realization that I love music photography so much. And to be honest, I was making really good money doing music photography. Um, and the only reason I'm like kind of talking in past tense is because of the quarantine. Like I still yeah. do concert photography and all of that. Uh, but in, I believe it was November, beginning of November last year, I accepted a position with a marketing firm here in St. Louis doing photo and video stuff for them. And so like every day of work, I'm literally out like shooting commercials or shooting product stuff. And it's definitely, this is like my first salary job. And I'm just like, this is so weird, but I'm learning so much. And I mean, obviously I'm making more money at a salary job than I was yeah. with music, just strictly my music photography. But I'm really, you know, I thought I was burnt out on concerts for a minute. And now with this quarantine, I was like, no, I'm not burnt out. I just like needed to take a break for a second. Right. So I'm very ready for this to be over so that we can get back to doing that. Yeah. Well, I mean, I take breaks just so I don't get like, like you said, get kind of like burnt out. So like yeah. in, the, in the summer, there aren't a whole lot of shows that mm -hmm. I'm like very pumped to see. So like I'll do maybe one or two at the amphitheater. But yeah. for the most part, I'll try not to go to any shows. And then once the fall kicks back up, that's like when oh, all, yeah. the, it's when all busy, the bands. Busy. Yeah. And so I'm like, all right, back in business. Yeah. So I kind of do that to myself just so I don't. And then I'll stop shooting models and I'll go back to like um, concerts because mm -hmm. that, that can also be kind of tiring. You're just kind of like. Yeah. Like I, I try not to lose the love for photography both ways. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Balance is definitely key, I think. Yeah. And then. I've seen that you've had some amazing like shoot like shoots like you as a model, like you've oh, it's so, like the, well, the one shot, like the one shot uh, like in the I'm not sure if it's a desert or if it's just yeah. kind of like it was in the desert. Yes, that is like my all time like right now that's my favorite shot of like like I've ever seen of like really it, it's like up there. Like, Why? Thank you so much. And so like tell me about that like what, what's it like being like. I'm not like, I don't know if you consider yourself a model, but like, mm -hmm. what's it like being on the other side of the camera? So I've actually, I've like done modeling stuff since I was really young. Um, used to go to like modeling conventions and stuff, uh, like all the time in St. Louis. Um, I never really like took it anywhere. A lot of like modeling agencies, I just didn't agree with, even at a young age, I didn't agree with like their procedures of stuff. Um, just like you having to pay modeling agencies in order for them to like bring you on. And I'm like, okay, well you already take a percentage cut whenever people book like to hire the models, you know? So 
I just like, I never really wanted to get into that, but I've, I've dabbled, um, being on the other side of the lens. I grew up, I had a lot of, uh, photographer friends growing up and, um, was really close to a lot of people, um, that ran photography studios. Uh, I would like, I think I was in like, I was in eighth grade doing a uh, senior portrait, like modeling for a photography studio that wanted to use those photos to market to seniors who were graduating. Um, so I've been on the other side of the lens, I feel like longer than I have been on the back side of it. Yeah. But that particular story of that shoot in the desert. So I've got my best, best, best friend. Her name is Riley. Um, she recently, well, not recently, it's, it's been about a year now, about a year ago, she moved out to Vegas. Um, and we try to keep up like visiting each other as often as we can. Um, and she's a photographer as well. And, um, she does like, she does a lot more like studio style. Like she's very, very talented when it comes to like person photography, like models and stuff like that. Um, and she had, I had just started this new job and she had started a new job working for Apple and we had gone like months and months without seeing each other and uh she was like kind of struggling with some stuff I wasn't doing too hot on my end either just like uh I think it was that typical like winter depression type stuff you know yeah um and so I called I don't know where this came from I went and talked to my boss and I said hey can I have two days off and he was like for what? And I was like, I want to fly to Vegas. And he's like, yeah, sure. I guess like, I don't care. I was like, okay, cool. So I tried to text Riley and she wouldn't wake up. And so I called her boyfriend and I was like, Hey, what's Riley doing on this day? And he's like, uh, I don't really know. She like might have work or something. And I was like, can you pick me up from the airport on this day and take me to the airport on this day? And he was like, yeah, I'm free. What are you visiting? And I was like, yeah, I'm going to book my flight right now. <laughs> he was like, Okay, so she woke up. I told her that I had already booked a flight out there. She was super stoked. I literally flew out there. I think I was there for maybe 48 hours in total. Um, one of the things that helps both of us um, as creatives is creating um, to kind of get out of that mental headspace um, that we can fall into sometimes. So we didn't have any ideas for this shoot. I knew that I wanted to go to sand dunes and... Uh, that was about it. I just knew that we wanted to do sand dunes. So we both picked out some outfits out of her closet, uh, started taking off. I think we drove, it was about an hour and a half. And the GPS told us to turn right down this road. And as we're driving down this road, we keep seeing these government signs that are like, turn back now, private property. Uh, like, if you don't have a badge, like, authorities will be called and all of this stuff. And Riley is driving and she's like, are you sure that this is the right way? And I'm like, yeah, yeah, look at Apple Maps. Like, if we just get through this checkpoint, like the dunes are right on the other side. And she was like, I really don't feel like we're supposed to be here. And I'm like, no, 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 just keep going. And she was like, okay, we're coming up to like a gate type thing or whatever, like kind of like you see at the borders. Yeah. And uh, she was like, it, there was like one final sign that was like, absolutely no public personnel like authorized personnel only like very big no-nos like that yeah. we were not supposed to be there and she's like Chelsea we've got to do something and I was like well just pull up to the gate and I'll ask this guy what's up and she's like okay <laughs> so we pull up and he's like yeah you guys are like really not allowed to be here right now and she's like okay, can we just like pull through and like loop around or something? And he's like, no, you have to back up like all the way, just back up. And she's like, okay, well, can you help us find these sand dunes? And we're like just sitting there with the phone asking this officer, he's like loaded with like guns and ammunition and stuff. Just chatting this guy up about trying to find some sand dunes. Yeah. And he's like, he's like, I don't know what you're talking about, but go down that road, take it another 30 minutes and you might see something. I don't know. So we get down there, we did this shoot. We literally just walked out there and started shooting. I shot some stuff of her. I think I did more video of her than anything because wa I'm wanting to get more comfortable with video. She took some photos of me and on our way back, we were joking about like, I wonder where, was that Area 51? And we were like, no, couldn't be. Cause you know, they closed Area 51 down. Like it's no longer an operation or anything now. Yeah. Uh, 
And I, as we were driving past the road that we had first turned off of, I decided to pull up my Apple Maps and to see like what that place was. Sure as shit, it was Area 51. So <laughs> Riley and I almost broke into Area 51 just trying to get that shot. <laughs> <laughs> and and there was an officer there. Just yeah. Even though it shut down. Yeah, it was very funny. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah. And we kept seeing. Uh, and I mean, like anyone can drive the road. Um, that like goes around it or whatever, but there are just like, there are like these weird, uh, they're like dome houses or like dome buildings or whatever. They look yeah. very, very skeptical about those. So yeah. area 51 is closed down. However, don't turn down that road because <laughs> they won't <laughs> let you through. <laughs> hmm, man. Yeah. Now, now that, that should be, that's like the start of like a movie right there. It's just, I know, yeah. Like, that oh, could that could have been a plot. Yeah, like oh, we just came out for a photo shoot, and now we're yeah. running from aliens and shit like that. Well, hey, you're the writer. Let's let's get a script going. <laughs> oh my god, like like right now, I have uh, eight or nine script ideas that like the other day, just because quarantine, I was just like, all right, mm-hmm. these are the ideas I have. I just typed them all out, and I was like, okay, love story, love story, horror, horror uh thriller i was like okay i think i can i think i can manage yeah. some of this i was like i've never been in love so i'll wait till that i'll wait till do uh, that one but everything else i'm like all right i've been scared i've been uh i've been right. chased down hallways before i can do that like oh what you've been chased do you have any oh this is okay do you have any paranormal experiences in your life oh man or anything like super spooky like that has happened to you maybe you've even like your brain has just convinced you that something has happened but you're like not sure but maybe (laughs) hmm uh paranormal i'm trying to think back okay Mm -hmm. um hmm not really not that i can think of uh off the top of my head um there's only ever been one time I've been scared and mm-hmm. it was, uh, I was, I think eighth or ninth grade. And I, my parents had driven me to Jack in a box mm-hmm. and I was just standing outside the, the, the restaurant. And I just started walking towards the parking lot and I see this figure just running right towards oh, me, gosh. hood up. And I'm like, Oh shit. <laughs> like my mind was like I, like I closed my eyes for a second opened them the figure was still coming and I was like I'm either gonna get killed or raped like that was my mind yeah. at that time <laughs> I was like I was like I was like I was like uh maybe if I get them to rape me they won't kill me I like my right. mind was just like at this weird place in my head and then like right. the figure opened up his arms and I'm like oh no you're fucking kidding me and like I like I froze up and like you think you'll start running or something yeah but your body just freezes up yeah. and as the figure came up closer he like lifted his head and it was my friend and i was like you motherfucker yeah i was I like do that i was like hold on a second how the fuck did you get here and he's like i ran all the way here from your house i was like my house is like a mm, it's like maybe two miles from here he's like yeah i just dropped my stuff off uh left it under your porch and then just booked it over here I was like, How did you know that you were at Jay in the box. Well, I, I think I texted him like, "Oh, hey, oh, okay. we'll be there. We'll, we'll be there soon. We're we're picking up some Jack in the Box." I didn't think he, he would sprinted run. Sprinted like two <laughs> miles to you. Sprinted two miles just to give me a fucking heart attack. Oh I was like, God. I was like, dude, like I could have killed you. And he's right. like, and he's like, dude, you froze. Like you, <laughs> <laughs> you weren't doing anything. You weren't doing anything. I was like, you're right, but like, that's the only time I've ever been scared. Uh um paranormal though not really like i wish you know Mm -hmm. because like i'm a spiritual guy so i like i like to think that there's like spirits around or something like that but i've never experienced anything like that Hmm. you know okay i'm always just like so curious about that i'm always just so curious because i'm i haven't really experienced anything i i have like one experience that i think maybe something happened and i I don't really talk about it because it still like gives me like chills to this day mm. to talk about it. Um, 
but like I'm always so interested it's like some people have that kind of stuff like drawn to them yeah and so it's like I'm always asking everyone like anytime that I'm like oh this is the perfect time for this question <laughs> mm, yeah I mean hmm. and I don't know if this is just because like of the events but like so uh like uh, I shared a room with my grandpa so mm -hmm. like and so like the only thing that separated us in the room was just like um a shelf so mm -hmm. he would sleep on the other side and then he moved to california to live with my uh, other family and on and i think his last wish before he died he just wanted to go back to mexico and mm -hmm. so they had just crossed the border and then he had just died like he just so oh, wow. like it was it was this really weird kind of sad but also like he, well, he went back so he like yeah. he, he died in Mexico. Fulfilled that last wish. And then, hmm, like, maybe a month later, like, I would sleep. We had taken out all of his stuff and just put it in the garage. And so I had more mm -hmm. room for myself. And I would, I would, like, wake up sometimes. And I could swear I could see, like, his, like, figure just mm -hmm. standing, like, on the hallway. And, mm -hmm. like, it would freak me the fuck out. I was like, what the fuck did I just see? Cause I didn't know, it was, yeah. I, I didn't know if it was him or I could just see something just standing there. Yeah. And I was like, that's kind of freaky as fuck, you know? And yeah. then maybe like seven months after he died, I had just broken down. So like, I don't think I ever like dealt with it. Yeah. So like, I think because I think like maybe like a month after he died, my dad kind of came down to my room and then he kind of just broke down in front of me. Mm -hmm. And so I was like, okay, I'll be the strong one. But then yeah. like a couple of months later, I broke down. It was like, I just brought up his name. I was like, oh, like, oh, well, I'll never, I can't call him or I can't like, like, it was just like this yeah. weird kind of like feelings just came out and I didn't know him that well. Like I had maybe mm -hmm. known him for like a couple of years, but yeah, I guess I had these feelings bubbling inside and they just came out spewing out. And the funny yeah. thing is, like, the second I felt that vulnerable, I got a phone call from my friend. He's like, hey, man, how you doing? And it was just kind of, like, the right time for him to be like, oh, hey, how's yeah. it going? And so I was like, yeah. oh, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm all right, you know? He's like, you yeah. want to hang out? I was like, yeah. And so, like, I don't know if that was just kind of divine intervention of, like, hey, you're going to be fine. You're going to be okay. Yeah. So, I love stuff like that. Yeah. But other than that, that's as far Nothing as... Nothing, like, spooky or anything. <sighs> I wish. I wish I could yeah. have a spooky tale. We'll have to, like, go on, like, a ghost hunter's adventure or something sometime. Yeah. Like, I know there's, like, a house very close to where I live that, like, hasn't been sold mm -hmm. since I was in maybe first grade. Mm -hmm. And it's just sitting there, and, like, people keep on trying to sell it, but no one buys it. And it's, like, mm -hmm. a, it's, like a very decent size, like, almost mansion kind of house. Mm -hmm. And I'm just, like, someone dying there's gotta there. be something there's gotta yeah. be something in there <laughs> i just want to go in and like figure it out check it out yeah so i'm with it hey if you ever need a if you ever need a ghost adventure buddy i got you all right we'll do it heck yeah and so hmm i'm trying to think of like what questions have i not asked hmm I'm trying to think um oh yeah like what well, have you had any bad experiences at concerts like like not not photography wise but just like mm -hmm. either the show wasn't good or like someone ruined it for you or anything like that i i had a really weird uh i'm trying to think i've definitely i definitely have some people uh there's one for sure uh that have made like my my concert going experience or they had made in the past my concert going experience uh, a little like uncomfortable I would say um, I think that uh, being a female in the music industry is pretty hard uh, as it is I and it sucks because the music industry is a hard industry to begin with all around. Yeah. Um, so it really sucks that it's even worse um, for females um, across the board. Um, I would say like, I've been denied, I wouldn't say like, just like specific concerts. I've had one person that I had um, a really rough patch with. Uh, and he just, 
he just made like my life a living hell for the longest time as far as concerts went, um, like holding photo passes over my head. Um, if I didn't like hang out with him, um, different things like that. Um, and that's no longer a situation which I'm really, really thankful for. And that came with um, me breaking out of being so reliant on other people to help me get photo passes and learning like, hey, I can go directly to management and get them myself, you know, type things. Yeah. Um, but I would say like, I've had a couple of uh, tour offers um, to go along. Like I had an offer to be a wardrobe assistant on one tour. Um, and do like assistant TM type stuff. And uh, they loved my resume and everything like that um, until they found out that I was a girl. Mm. So uh, like that was really sucky. Um, I have like, I've been up for tours before and uh, it's come down to like me and another person. And uh, like, I haven't been the one chosen and that's just the way the cookie crumbles. Um, yeah. Like, I think everyone has some sort of experience that surrounds that. I'm trying to think, uh, I mean, being, um, I like kind of, I don't even know if I would call it like managing, uh, but the band Broken Youth that I work with, um, I, I do a lot of like, um, like account managing. Um, I help Keegan Walker. He's one of the band members. Um, we do a lot of like the management stuff together as far as like, um, getting tickets to all of the members, um, like, uh, I think we do a lot of, like, the merchandise ordering together and stuff like that, and so whenever it comes to show days, um, I'm always the one that is setting up the merch, um, making sure that we have someone to run the merch, and if we don't have someone to run the merch, making sure that there's one of the boys at the table at all times, or myself, um, making sure that, you know, they have waters whenever they go on stage and it's so it's just so great because it's just a local band but the reason why I do it is because we're just such good friends and I've known these guys for so long yeah. so we all just like really vibe together and I do all of their uh photo and video stuff for the most part we do hire out um some other people to do stuff like Juan Ibanez does their music videos um and like I've had to hire um some other photographers to come out and shoot shows like when I've been on tour and they've had a show or something um, but I would say like a lot of <laughs> the boys like to drink, which is mm. awesome. I mean, like I like to drink too. It's not a big deal. Uh, but I would say like, there's been a lot of instances where, uh, the boys are getting ready to go on stage and are, uh, having the backing tracks started playing and we can't find the lead singer anywhere mm. <laughs> to be found. So, uh, <laughs> I would say that's like, those are like my only experiences uh, that things have like gone away. I've heard uh, my my boyfriend Max. Uh, he's he's a sound guy at Foo Bar, so like I've heard a lot of like horror stories from bands and stuff out of him. Like if bands haven't gotten something, they'll literally just leave the venue and like not play their show. But I haven't ever been at a show where like something like that has happened. Um, I've never been like really assaulted at a show. I've had a couple of things happen, like where someone may have like may have like either brushed me the wrong way or like maybe were really intoxicated and like I don't know just said some like sideways stuff or whatever um but I really don't have a problem putting people in their place so like it's never been a big enough of an issue yeah. to like be ingrained in my memory for a long time so I feel like I've gotten pretty fair treatment um I've had a couple of weird instances where like people of of tour packages uh like not not even like band members it's like tms or like lds or other photographers or something like try to get me to go back to the the tour bus with them and like you can just tell what people's intentions are with that i've got a lot of great uh like crew member friends um i'm like hell yeah let's go hang out on a bus but i've had like people just meet me at shows and they're just like making really weird advances you know on you and you can tell that the reason that they want you to go back to the van isn't just for like good conversation and like hanging out it's to try to get something else out of you yeah um but but like I said like I just kind of you just brush those things off and make up excuses and shit so uh, I think that happened with uh who was it that came through 
I believe it was like a member of, of like bad wolves crew and he doesn't work with them anymore. It was never, it, and it was never like anything crazy or whatever. I just got some like weird vibes or whatever. Yeah. And I was just like, yeah, you know, I'm actually, a, I've got work in the morning or something like that. So I'm just going to go home. <laughs> um, but I think that's really the only one that really even stands out to me of an issue that I've ever had was like at that show. But I had plenty of reasons that I gave him that I was like not interested. Right. So yeah, yeah. but yeah, that's about it. I mean, nothing like nothing crazy. I mean, I've, I've got other like female friends in the music industry that have stories that are, I'm just like, I would have literally murdered someone over some of that stuff, you know? Yeah. Uh, not that I condone killing by any means but i mean self-defense there, there are some real yeah there's some real shitty people out there and i've heard some real shitty stories and i'm just like totally not acceptable and like people would people would be in jail for a lot of the stuff that they did for prison, yeah so. well it's it's strange too because like anytime someone like either another photographer is like oh yeah you're like really nice like a lot mm -hmm. of people that i meet are really shady or like that yeah. I'm like I'm like I don't know what shady like I don't even know like I'm really bad at like not too bad but like I can tell pretty good if someone's like shady or not and I'm just like yeah. uh, like I just try to mind my own business and be like all right if it affects yeah. me I'll interject but for the most part mm -hmm. I try not to like um like I hate conflict I hate drama yes like yeah. that's like the one thing like I'm like if if there was an apocalypse i'd probably be the first to die because i'd be like come on guys <laughs> let's settle this with words and then someone would be right, like yeah. boom no we're not settling with words <laughs> and i'm just like ah, i hate confrontation and so yeah. i mm, i try not to uh talk to people that i think are gonna you know yeah. like be trouble i guess right yeah and so thankfully everyone that i've met has been super nice that's really awesome. Uh, you know, but you never know. That could change. And someone's right. an ass. And I got to yeah. be like, ah. Like if, because I think yeah. most of the photographers that I see at shows are women. So I know that like yeah. if something ever happened, I'm like, I know I have to get in there and defend my friend or like, yep. got to be like, hey, motherfucker, like, what are you doing? Like, right. That's like the worst. And and especially since I'm an older brother, like to two girls, I'm like, yeah, my, my, my guard is always up to like, just immediately mm -hmm. be like, Hey, leave them alone. Like, so yeah. I'm just always ready to like, you know, like I hate confrontation, yeah. but if I have to it's necessary, if it's yeah. necessary, I'll, uh, I'll get in your fucking face. Well, on, on behalf of the, the female photography community here in St. Louis, super appreciate, uh, people like you being in the pit with us. It, it's very reassuring just knowing that there's still like good people out there that really do like want to have your back. And I think that's the majority of the music community. The ones that are bad are, are seriously, I believe the outliers. Um, yeah. Music community is really awesome. Like I said before, uh, there's just like a couple of like bumps that, you know, people have to get over or whatever, but um, that's super awesome that you're like always looking out and stuff. That's, that's a good quality in a human. Yeah. I mean, I wish, that I didn't have to look out, you know, it's Absolutely. like people could just feel safe, but like, yeah. un, you know, unfortunately that's not the world we live in. So it's yeah. like, you know, like I don't like it. Cause then it's like, cause my sister right now, she's super, she's just graduating college. So she's super into activism right now. Yeah. And she's like, well, I don't want you defending me all the time. I'm like, I get it. Trust me. Yep. But yeah. there are going to be times where, you're gonna need someone and I'm just like if it's not me then your boyfriend maybe like just right yeah. always have someone around yeah you know and like even me as a guy sometimes like and people I think always laugh at me sometimes when I say it, but like even sometimes for me I'm like I don't like walking out in the dark or anything like that yeah. so I'm just like I'm like if I don't like walking out in the dark right like and I'm a guy I can only mm -hmm. imagine what it's like for women to like especially after concerts or especially yeah since uh since we get to leave early and so yep. like the parking lot's empty and especially mm -hmm. in the back of uh delmar yeah like, oh that's a scary parking lot too 
Like, I literally had to ask, like, a girl, be like, hey, like, I'll walk with you to your car. But realistically, I was just like, I want to walk with you so that I'm Will you walk with me? Yeah, Yeah. exactly. (laughs) I just made up the excuse. I was like, yeah, I'll walk you to your car. And then and then when we got to our car, I was like, hey, can you drive me to my car? (laughs) Right. Yep, exactly. I'm not walking back. And that is, yeah. So, like, that's probably the one sucky thing, I would say. Yeah. That. Yeah. Sucks about all that. Right. Yeah. The FUBAR, uh, outside of FUBAR was always pretty sketchy for me. Um, but the, everyone's the car there, got broken in all the time. Yeah, that happens. Uh, there's, so there's two homeless people that hang around uh, that are consistent hangarounds. We call them, I think one of them's pops for sure. And then I think the other one is like ma or like mama or something like that. Um, uh, there's a male and female that both like kind of hang out around there. And I think that they get a little pissed when people like won't offer up, you know, some change or whatever, and they just start, start busting into stuff. But Fubar, uh, that area, actually, the city has put up a couple of more security cameras. So that's been really beneficial. But the, the staff is really good about, for me anyway, and I know that they would do it for literally anyone who asked, you could ask the door guy and he'd do it. But they're really good about like walking me to my car. Um, it doesn't matter where the concert like is at time wise or anything like that they'll stop what they're doing and they'll they'll walk you out to your vehicle so I always appreciate anyone who's even if you don't feel like you need it you know I always feel it's like it's when you least expect it that stuff happens you know yeah so better to better to just be on guard you know right yeah like the only time I feel safe is like leaving the amphitheater because I don't know why I don't know why they have security all throughout the parking lot yeah. All the time. I think that's why, you know, yeah. it's, I always feel comfortable walking, but and it's like, really well lit too. So you can like see if anyone's walking around. Yeah. And plus I live like five minutes from there. So like oh, if, any, if anything ever happened to me, it'd be like, well, he should have been home five minutes ago. And right. Yeah, like, exactly. So like, yeah, it'd be, uh, but I don't think anything will ever happen to me. I don't know. Yeah. Good. You better knock on some wood there, bud. I'm superstitious. Uh, I don't know. I like, well, okay. So now that we're like in quarantine mode, like I've been mm-hmm. watching a lot of Dateline. It's just like, oh yeah. And like, I can't stop myself from like going mm-hmm. to the next episode. And then mm-hmm. I just finished True Detective season three. So like my mind is all over like, like yeah. kidnappings, disappearings. And yeah. I'm just like, that'll never happen to me. There's a really good crime podcast called Crime Junkie. And it's these two girls, they talk, they just talk about uh, like crime stories or whatever, but they like, what I really like about their podcast is they like, they stay on track. They don't like get off track or anything like that. Like they really stay consistent to telling you the story. Um, And their voices are just really nice. I don't know if you're a voice person when it comes to podcasts, but I'm like, if your voice is like to Valley Girl or like something about it is like, I'm not, I'm not going to listen to the podcast. Yeah. But that is like my favorite crime podcast of all time. It's called Crime Junkie. Hmm. Phenomenal listen if you ever have time. Crime Junkie. Yeah. yeah. I listened to one a couple months ago called Monster. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I think the season was the Zodiac Killer. Nice. So, I love that story. And so all they, so like, it, like they had like the, the mood music and everything. Mm-hmm. And I would come home from work pretty late at night, like around midnight. And every time it was always a battle to get to my front door. I was just like, God damn it. Like <laughs> I shouldn't have listened to this podcast on the way, on the right. way home. And now I'm like, I'm like in my mind, I have it. Okay. He's not here. He's probably yeah. dead, but they never caught him. So I'm right. like, I'm always like, fuck, why did I do this to myself? Yeah. Like it's the worst and I hate it. And I'm like, like, I hope I don't hope my kids don't inherit this from me. Mm-hmm. Have you seen uh, the Netflix uh, I don't know if it's, I don't know if it's a documentary or if it's like a docu series, docu drama type thing, but it's called Zodiac. It's really good. I'm trying to think of like who plays in it, but if you like the Zodiac Killer, that's definitely a good one. Jake Gyllenhaal. Oh yeah, it's a movie. Yeah, I've seen. Yeah, it, yeah. movie. So good. Uh, yeah, that was the first time like I got into it. Like mm-hmm. was, I saw that, and then. It, like the the podcast does a good job of saying like the second you hear the story and you absorb it somehow you feel like you're in a you feel like you want to become an investigator and like mm-hmm. try to solve it yourself 
So yep. like I would look up like the notes that he sent. And I'm like, oh yeah, can I figure this out? And like yeah. I would like just be like, okay. And I spent like hours just reading on it. I'm like, mm-hmm. maybe I should just put this away before I like I become obsessed. Right. Yeah. It's very easy to do that too. Yeah. Especially with that one, because like I've seen uh, documentaries where a lot of these people who get obsessed with with the Zodiac, especially, they mm-hmm. either get divorced or they they have no families. They've just kind of, you know, let things. They get so into it. Yeah, that they've kind yeah. of uh, kind of like in Jake like Jake Gyllenhaal's character, his you know he gets yeah. divorced and is like you know, yeah. his wife leaves him or something. Like I don't know, but like I was like you know what, it's. I'd rather leave that to the professionals. I'll just yeah, there you go. <laughs> I'll just stay in my own lane. Right. And so, is there like anything else you're doing during quarantine? Like, is there besides uh, podcasts, any movies, TV shows? Um, I actually watched The Lion King, like the remake or whatever, last night for the first time. How was it? And I just want to say to all the haters out there <laughs> that did not like the movie what the heck man it was so good like I loved it it's literally it's like literally shot for shot the original they did change like a couple of parts um I think they like added in a song they cut down one of the songs um uh Timon and Pumbaa are amazing they switched a couple of their lines but they made them so much funnier Mm. which was awesome like I think that the the things that they did do differently were really tasteful um I also like watching that movie as an adult and understanding the storyline of it is really fucked up. Like I had, I had no idea. And like, I, like I was like young, obviously whenever I was watching this, but like, I didn't know that the entire story was like literally centered around practically scar. Just like I like killing off like Mufasa. Like there was this, the, the scene where like, Simba is in the gorge and he's like practicing his little roar or whatever and the stampede comes through and his dad comes down and like saves him and that's end up ends up being like how he dies or whatever I had no idea that like Scar set that whole thing up like I totally thought that Simba was just being a little cub fucking wandering around doing shit or whatever and like this just happened yeah Uh, so it was it was very weird being able to like understand it as an adult and just being like y'all really showed this to us as children and like we were just okay with this yeah um so yeah just like watching a lot of uh movies and stuff um we got a dog we got a dog on 420 so that was really dope uh and so we've been like training him and hanging out with him his name's bash uh his his government name is Sebastian. Though, nah. but we, call him, we call him Bash for short. Uh, he's a cutie. But yeah, I don't know. I'm still, I'm still working from home. I'm really lucky. Um, my company has had to like do a couple of things in order to keep us working from home. Um, but like, I'm not mad about a four day work week. So, yeah. um, but very thankful for my company that they've uh, literally done and are doing everything that they can in order to to keep us all like clocked in and still getting paid and stuff like that. So I still have like video and photo stuff that I'm editing for them. Um, I do a lot of like, uh, I write Facebook ads, like help out with other departments and stuff where I can. Um, We're all just really trying to stay busy um, as much as we can. And yeah, so I work a lot. I work every day during the week, switching to four day work weeks, I believe this next week. So that'll be a little bit of an interesting change. Um, but uh, yeah, I don't really know. I've kind of, I've edited some old photos. I think I'm going to, I had a, one of the music videos that I shot a couple of years ago. We shot it as one storyline. And then uh, one of the actresses, like after the completion of filming, um, for, good, for good reasons, uh, like felt uncomfortable with some of the shots that we had done um she was afraid that like her family would see them um and they were just very they're just very religious people um and so we ended up having to like reshoot half of the music video Mm. um in a more appropriate like kind of manner um but since 
since that whole thing had happened, we put out the music video with the new stuff or whatever with the new scenes. Um, she has like, um, she's just really like started becoming her own person um, and really taking a stand for the things that she believes in. Um, and I mean, and none of the, the, I guess I should like kind of give a little bit of information here. The scenes, uh, we had it play out where um, two girls were like kind of falling in love with each other on accident. Um, and so, I mean, it wasn't anything like crazy, like nudity or anything like that. Yeah. Uh, just like kind of the principle of uh, same sex, like relationships didn't really fly with her parents. Um, and I don't, I mean, like, I don't even think that, uh, I think that she's straight, you know, uh, but it was just, she was so scared that her family was going to see that. And like, there were going to be repercussions from that. And now she's like living out on her own, doing her own thing. She just really came into herself. Uh, and she gave me permission to re-edit that music video if I wanted to with the original storyline. So that's, cool. that's something that I think I'm going to dive into in the next couple of weeks uh, yeah. and do that. That's pretty cool. Yeah. 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 Well, yeah. Uh, I don't want to take up too much more of your time, but oh. it's been awesome talking to you. And uh, I know we had set up a shoot because I wanted to get some shots of me. I think mm -hmm. it was the last weekend, maybe, mm -hmm. before all yeah. of this happened. Yeah. Uh, so we'll have to reschedule that. Yes. Uh, especially because I feel like I've gotten fatter just in the last month. I have gotten, it's a, what did someone say to me the other day? It's the, the quarantine 15 or something like that. that that's what I'm, I'm getting hearing it too, too. Man. I'm like, God <laughs> damn it. Like, I have weights in my garage that I can do, but like, it's not the same. Like I told no, my friend, not. I like going to the gym because... I could kind of show off a little bit. Yeah. And it's, you're in a different mindset, you know, yeah. that you're there to do something where it's like working out at home. You're like, I just want to relax. I don't want to do this. Exactly. So I'm like, I'm really hoping that like sooner rather than later, things start to open up so I can go back to the gym and yeah. work out. Cause like, I feel, I'm feeling the, the quarantine 15. Yeah, me too. Yeah. Me too. I'm ready for this to be over so we can get to some summer activities and get back to shooting. And we never even really got a chance to like hang out or anything like that. Uh, I got super busy and I know that we were, we had that shoot that we were supposed to do. And I was so looking forward to that, uh, just getting to chill. So we'll have to get back to that soon. Yep. It was super nice talking to you. This was a really, really cool idea. And I'm so glad that I got to be like one of your first guests for this. And I look forward to to see and who else you you get on here in the next couple of weeks or months or however often you are going to be yeah. putting this out but hopefully it becomes a regular thing and then hopefully i can get like people that i've worked with so like models mm -hmm. bands uh other photographers so yeah i'm hoping that yeah. uh hope, hoping that it gets bigger you know hopefully and uh yeah yeah thank you for being the first yeah absolutely thank you for having me on here yeah, not a problem. Well, you have a nice day. Thank you. You as well. I'll talk All to you right. soon. See ya. All right. Bye-bye.